Back at it again. It's the state of football. All right, seeing a place to be. Rick Saratella, tell it like it is when it comes to the NFL draft and everything football. It is January 12th, 2022. Happy New Year to you if you're just tuning in for the first time this year. Uh, we're off to the races over at the NFL Draft Bible.com, part of the Sports Illustrated Network. Make sure you check us out over at si.com backslash NFL slash draft. Uh, we do have over 500 scouting reports right now living on the NFL Draft Bible for the 2022 NFL Draft. We're getting ready to depart uh, next week. A week from today, we'll be uh, departing Destination Pasadena for the 10th Annual NFL PA Collegiate Bowl. We're really excited about that at the granddaddy of them all, uh, the Rose Bowl, January 29th, 2022. That will be broadcast on the NFL Network Kicking off the all-star circuit of the big three, it'll be followed by the East-West Shrine Bowl on February the 3rd, of course, the Senior Bowl on February the 6th, and we are on location broadcasting live uh, from the Test Football Academy in Martinsdale, New Jersey, uh, where Kenny Pickett of the Pitt Panthers is actually here. We'll be chatting with him uh, following the show, and so he's getting ready for that Senior Bowl appearance. He's getting ready for that NFL scouting combine, which will be held now in the first week of March. The NFL calendar kind of getting pushed back here a little bit, uh, and we'll get into what that calendar could look like in the future with our next guests here. Uh, but make sure you tune in to the testfootballacademy.com for their 2022 NFL draft combine class. I believe this is their 21st or 22nd year. Uh, a lot of notable alumni over the years going back to Joe Flacco and Patrick Peterson, so many great individuals who have walked through these doors. And so uh, we're happy to be on location across the nation. Again, if, uh, NFL Draft Bible also will be back out in California uh, mid-February, right after the Senior Bowl. We'll be doing the Hub Football Camp uh, in California. So go to hubfootball.com if you want to get more information for that one. Uh, thanks for tuning in here on this uh, special edition of the State of Football. I see Big Law waking up with us in the chat room. If you guys have any questions along the way here, please drop them in. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer them. There's a lot of topics to get covered, but it's, uh, it's playoff time. Playoffs, what? Uh, we're talking about playoffs. And shout out to our good friend, Jim L. Mora, uh, son of Jim Mora, and of course, UConn Illustrated that we just launched. Uh, so make sure you check out UConn Illustrated, our new website, and uh, we'll be launching Esports Illustrated uh, in 2022. So a lot of exciting things, but nothing more exciting than right here, right now, our next two guests uh, joining us here today. We have Eric Grubman, John Collins, uh, executives from the Sports Entertainment Acquisition Corp. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you today? Hey, Rick. Terrific. How are you doing? Uh, we're doing good. And you could tell Eric has that jersey in him. Uh, how you doing? Not too far down the road. Of course, uh, former NFL uh, uh, vice president. And of course, uh, John Collins making a cameo here on the state of football, the former NHL CO COO, and now uh, doing great things with the Sports Entertainment Acquisition Corp. And if you're not familiar, uh, you definitely need to check out some of the things they're doing in the technology space, in the football universe. And uh these two gentlemen have been kind enough to join us here, chop it up, talk some football, talk some NFL. We'll get into some playoff uh, situations here in just a second. But, uh, gentlemen, let's start off with you, John, since you are familiar with the show. We appreciate you coming back. We had so much fun uh, your first time go around. But, uh, you know, refresh the listening audience at home. Maybe they're not familiar uh, with, with the sports Entertainment Acquisition Corp and some of the things you guys have going on. Just give us a little bit uh, of an update of what you've been up to. Well, I think the, the 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 best sort of news, biggest news for for the sports fan is is the company that we're partnering with, which is Supergroup. It's a global uh, online sports betting and and i gaming company uh, that is coming to the U.S. Uh, their their sports brand is Betway, which is launched now in in over ten. You know, 10 states in the U.S. Uh, is pretty active. They are, you know, they're in 
they're, they're, they're really around, around the globe. Uh, and they are uh, probably, you know, they've, they've made big inroads into other sports like the NHL and the NBA. They have uh, numerous sponsorships around the world. They're probably best known for what they've done, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, proper English football. Um, but they are coming to the U.S. They're a big $5 billion company. Uh, and we're just excited to, uh, to take these guys public and ultimately partner with them. Yeah, we're seeing the market boom here in the United States. And we got John Collins, Eric Grubman. We'll turn it over to Eric. And I just want to talk about some of the uh, challenges there with Betway coming over to the states. And, you know, there's still some uh, states here getting on board with uh, legalized sports wagering. However, FanDuel, uh, you've seen uh, Caesars, you've seen DraftKings. They have a very heavy footprint already uh Eric, what's the challenges there in terms of trying to capture some of that market space? It's a great question, Vic, and I'm going to get to it in, in 30 seconds. But before I do, I want to talk about something that's really, really important to me. And, and that is, um, I'd really like to get a tryout. I, I mean, I've been thinking about going back and playing football again for a lot of years. And I, right now, i got a little bit of time. And um, I know I've pledged to Supergroup three years i'm going to be on the board i'm going to be on be the chairman but i i i still think i could do it jc you think you think what do you think get a tryout so i'm right near you if you, you know you want to see what i've got it's i'll all be about over the coaching. it's all about yeah, the I mean, coaching. go ask you know, the giants you know, right they need a coach we got well, I, I don't know i could coach but you know uh, the jersey the the jersey roots the jersey dna i still think i got it anyway That's what i'm saying though we can coach you up we can coach you up i'm ready i'm seat. ready put me in coach save some seconds off that 40. i saw coach uh, kirby smart they had him at like the 36 inch vert i think we can get you up there and then who knows uh from there you know, the tryouts, I mean, uh, the big blue, they need a quarterback, they need offensive line. Uh, what are you weighing these days, Eric? Can we? Can you play both ways? I mean, we can make some stuff happen here. No, I'm down. I've been training like crazy. I'm down to about 168, 170. But I think I could bulk up to 175. I think I could get there. Yeah, we'll have to get you up there and get your weight up. I know you got the mountain bikes going on and uh, – the Jersey connections in full effect here on the state of football. Eric Rubman, John Collins, Rick Saratella. And uh, we're going to get into some of these NFL playoff matchups this weekend. We're going to preview some of these games, talk about some winners, and uh, maybe get some crystal ball predictions for you. But before we do that, uh, I, I am uh, fascinated with this uh, Betway coming over to the states and trying to make some inroads. We're seeing now sports books being um, – created inside the the nfl venues now you can actually go into some of the venues uh wager on a game on your way to your seats it's amazing how far uh, sports wagering has come here with the nfl well look i th this is still very early days and a lot of the companies you named and and there are more of them they are run by very smart entrepreneurial aggressive people um there are people in these other companies that have been around the gaming business overall, whether it's iCasino or Sportsbook for many years, although not necessarily online and not necessarily um, in America, uh, that's relatively new. But uh, the, the, the competition is significant. On the other hand, this is a burgeoning market and it's gonna continue growing at a rapid pace for quite a number of years. Think of each state as a country and each country regulates, um, each state regulates on its own terms and on its own schedule. So you have a constant addition to the landscape um, every couple of months. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about profitability and about, you know, how much it costs to get in and so forth and so on. And different companies have different strategies. And I have no perfect crystal ball to tell you which strategy or strategies are going to win and which ones are going to lose other than the look that we have at Supergroup. And the Supergroup, as John mentioned, is, is already global, is already scaled, is 100% online, never was in bricks and mortar, and is run today by the same person who started it 20 years ago 
and he's still a young man. Um, so S Supergroup knows how to get in new markets and knows how to compete. And most importantly, they know how to be profitable. And so with respect to the U.S. and their ability to compete in the U.S., they'll be fine. Um, but what's different about Supergroup really is they do not have to have any particular market share in any state in the United States, no particular market share in America in order for their business model to work. Um, they could have zero and their business model will work. So anything they get in the United States is upside and they already have a footprint that shows great, great promise. So we're really enthusiastic about it. And turning to the intersection of gaming and sports, it's always been there, always. What's the popular saying? Sports betting was invented about 15 seconds after sports. So what's changed today, other than the legal landscape, is the integration of the um, enjoyment, if you will, over making a wager on your favorite athlete or your favorite team or what's going to happen in a play. Um, that has become part of the experience. And you know, I'm being long-winded here, but I want to take this back a few years. Remember, remember when you could get something on your second screen while you were watching the, the television? Everyone said, oh, you know, it's never going to work. It's never going to work or it's gonna cannibalize, it didn't. All it did was add to the, the, the greatness of sports and that's what gaming will do. And that's what it's already done. Absolutely, it's enhancing the experience and uh, picture in picture was a big deal, right? And uh, you know, we, I remember trying to figure out picture in picture. Now the things that uh, today's audience is doing, they're probably got uh, three monitors at a minimum, right? They're watching it on the flat screen. They probably have a laptop up on some social media. They're probably texting all while uh, the plays are going on. And so uh, to your point, uh, look at how fantasy football has exploded over the last 20 to 25 years. And in so many ways, that was a form of legalized gambling, like uh, fans could get more interested into the game. How many people watch football Sunday? They're not rooting for a team. They're rooting for their fantasy team. They're rooting for individual players. They're watching the red zone and uh, and interacting uh, in, in the league message boards, in the chat rooms, in the trash talking, and everything that goes on. So this is just another enhancement of the experience, the game day experience, being able to have some of these prop bets. Uh, you can just – wager on anything now they got the nfl draft odds out already uh with aiden hutchinson out of michigan holding down the top spot kate kate on uh Kayvon thibodeau and and uh kenny pickett 3001 here at test football academy here on location the state of football rick saratella eric rubman john collins all right fellas let's talk a little football here because um we have an enhanced playoff schedule for the first time in history the nfl will have a monday night uh, playoff matchup and uh, that's exciting because uh, you know Saturday w was a big deal and having the, the that you know I always thought the um, the championship weekend leading into the Super Bowl was always a great weekend because you had you know championship Saturday championship Sunday two great days of football but now John they're adding the Monday night playoff game and that's going to be uh, the Rams and Cardinals I believe we'll start it off with that one uh, what does Monday night playoff football mean? And then we'll get into this matchup, the Cardinals and the Rams here. I, I, I agree, Rick. Look, the play, there's nothing like the NFL playoffs. And, you know, more football is better. You know, it, it does get into some of that. It's great for fans, right? Because now, now you got you got things to do Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, right? Just watch football. But, uh, you know, it gets into – it'll be interesting to see the ramifications, you know, the competitive ramifications with, you know, ultimately having a playoff and potentially having a short week. So, um, you know, you're, you're balancing the business of, of, of football and ultimately feeding the beast that is, you know, NFL fandom and, and the media companies who just want more and more content. Uh, and the fans are eating it up. And, you know, balancing that on the competitive side with, you know, more games – and uh, in short weeks in, in the playoffs, which would be interesting. But the playoff matchups are phenomenal, you know, coming up this week. Yeah. And, you know, that's a good point you make, though, because somebody might have to turn around, play Monday. Who knows? They might have to play Saturday. And in the playoffs, 
that really makes that number one seed more valuable than it's ever been before because, you know, the two seed used to mean something. Now, not so much. You've really got to lock up that home field advantage, and you have a significant edge uh, heading into the postseason. Uh, so, John, I'll stick with you, though. Rams, Cardinals, two of the uh, young coaching minds uh, of today's NFL, right, that everybody is kind of – put on this mantle and and of uh, seeing a lot of teams try to emulate this model because let's be honest uh Sean McVay Cliff Kingsbury they turn these organizations around very quickly and uh they've had success I I, I tend to believe this game is going to be high scoring but uh who, who, how do you kind of see this one playing out John yeah you know it's a really good point it's it, you know with a you know Black Monday with all the coaches changes this week um you know, you, you think about stability and, and how you really need to have alignment throughout the entire organization. And then you look at Arizona and the Rams and you got two young coaches, you know, two young first time head coaches who have pulled it together and have become kind of the, the, the standard, um, which creates all kinds of you know drama around the league. Right. Everybody wants the quick fix. And I think, you know, just hiring the right head coach is going to get there. When you know, very often it's it's the alignment throughout the entire organization, particularly between the personnel side and and the, and the coaching side. But I think Arizona, you know, Rams is going to be a really fascinating game, right? You get two real offensive geniuses who, uh, you know, are going to score a lot of points, and uh, it should be a really really entertaining game on Monday night. Of course, you yeah. got you know you got Green Bay sitting out there, right? So the ultimate home home field advantage is going to Green Bay in uh, five degree weather when they got a full week's rest. So all 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 roads travel through uh, the frozen tundra and man, they got that uh, AJ Dillon, man, at 250 pounds in the cold and then by the fourth <laughs> quarter rolling around, man, that's going to be a problem for a lot of teams. Uh, but, you know, the Rams, I think a lot of team uh, people thought, you know, with some of their in-season acquisitions, Eric, you know, adding a Von Miller, uh, adding an Odell Beckham Jr., who's kind of come on here late down the stretch. And uh, we saw the Rams go to the Super Bowl a couple <coughs> years ago with, with the Jared Goff. A lot of people feel like Matthew Stafford is an upgrade. Uh, you know, is, is the Rams team here primed for a run? Could it be the Rams and the Packers, do you think? Sure, it could be the Rams and the Packers. I think you could answer that question by saying it, in this NFL season, it could be anybody with anybody. This is a really unusual season for, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is a bunch of people moved, a um, bunch of young coaches, um, some of them quite new on the scene. And then you've got COVID and the protocols. And so the last minute changes. And so that has gone... Uh, through the season in a way that's made it one of the most exciting seasons ever, which is, you know, it's hard to say that every year, but it happens just about every year. And I, I got to say, I take my hat off to the people in these leagues who handle the contingency plans, everything from, you know, do we need to have snow shovelers um, poised when we're having a Super Bowl in the New York metro area? to uh, do we have to move the Super Bowl and what happens when a roof caves in in Minnesota. And so the contingency planning that's going on in each of these teams around all of these things and in the league office, and it's done at the NBA and it's done at the NHL, it's done everywhere. You know, you talk about that schedule and the intrigue of whether someone who plays Monday night's got to play Saturday. You know, the NFL has game played all of the outcomes a hundred times already, a hundred times, including weather interruptions on the travel if X goes to Y and Y goes to Z. And so they're gonna optimize the decision and it's gonna be to produce the best matchups with the least disruption. But look, at the end of the day, what are you gonna do about weather? And whether that produces an advantage or a disadvantage for somebody playing at Lambeau? And what are you going to do about a virus that, uh, you know, is just insistent on making its way? You know what you're going to do? You're going to play the game. You're going to play the game. Yeah, and it's good to see uh, them playing the game with full stadiums. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the unusual NFL season. Uh, how about the Las Vegas Raiders? Uh, their, their stadium was empty a year ago, and they've had an unusual season from uh, the coaching changes 
And I, I think that seeing the Cincinnati Bengals in the postseason, a lot of people would say uh, was an unusual sighting, uh, something that we haven't seen in quite some time or nor was expected. I'm not sure anybody uh, saw the Raiders or the Bengals as a prime playoff contender, but here we are. Uh, the Raiders interim coach, I have not heard enough good things from inside the building. He's the first uh, interim coach, fellow Paisan Basaglia, Rich. Um, you know, he took his team to the playoffs as an interim coach. It's never been done in the history of the NFL. I'll stick with you here, Eric. Do they have a shot to knock off the Cincinnati Bengals who took care of the Raiders earlier in the season? This Joe Burrow, he's he's as cool as a cucumber. I mean, he is so cool, man, back there in the pocket. Uh, how do you kind of see this matchup unfolding? I want to go to that game. That that that's a great matchup because it 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 again features the the land of the unknown and just who will bring what game to the field and what's going to happen in the fourth quarter because both of these teams have shown the ability from an excitement standpoint and and uh, sort of get yourself up off the mat standpoint to be able to just take it, take it, take it, and then come back and produce a win. And you got to take your hat off to both of them, um, but I do want to take my hat off uh, especially to two teams with two organizations. These are football organizations. They, both of those two, they love the game. Um, more than they love the business of the game. And um, I got to take my, I come from the business side, although as you know from the, my beginning comments, I'd really rather play. But <laughs> I come from the business side, but I got to tip my hat. These are two organizations that are totally focused on football. And yeah, so I, I love that matchup and I don't know how to handicap it. And about to be in the business that I'm in, I'm not going to say handicap or, or betting on anything like that uh, anyway. I'll go over to John because, you know, being the former president and CEO of the Cleveland Browns, he's very familiar with the Cincinnati yep. Bengals. And, uh, you know, I know they're no stranger to you, John, but uh, we mentioned, you know, some of these young head coaches, Zach Taylor, a lot of people thought maybe he was on the hot seat coming in. Uh, but Joe Burrow, they took some criticism for taking Jamar Chase over an offensive lineman. A lot of people thought they needed an offensive lineman. Give the Bengals credit. They were bold. Uh, they they listened to their quarterback. And uh, here they are. I mean, I think the Bengals, you, you had the Steelers, you had the Ravens. A lot of people thought the Browns were going to take a jump. And here we are. The Bengals win the division. And they're in the playoffs. Uh, Joe Burrow, to me, he could maybe – kind of take the next step and when we talk about top next top tier quarterbacks after some of these guys like Big Ben and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers hang it up I, I see Joe Burrow maybe here as as one of these future guys yeah I, I agree I mean Joe Burrow you know what what a phenomenal story he's got and as Eric said I mean you know the, it, it's the Cincinnati it's Paul Brown right it's the legacy of, of one of the great you know uh, godfathers of, of professional football. So it's really great to see the Bengals in it. It's great to see, uh, you know, a, a quarterback like Burrow who just keeps raising the bar, you know, for the organization and for himself. And, you know, the Raiders are an amazing story. I mean, to, to have to, ch you know, to be forced to change horses with your head coach midstream and then recover and make it into the playoffs is phenomenal. And, you know, they're, they're, they're in that great new stadium. So that created a lot of firepower for them and you know it's it, it, every one of the games this weekend has its own storyline which is so compelling which is why you know there's going to be a lot of problems in, in a lot of households around america with guys sitting in front of tel tvs for eight ten hours <laughs> saturday <laughs> sunday and then monday night yeah we're going to be testing uh, our wives patient pants uh the next couple weekends here as we talk to john collins Eric Rubman, so kind enough to join us here on the State of Football. Rick Saratella here, breaking it down for the NFL Draft Bible, uh, part of the Fan Nation Network here on Sports Illustrated. Make sure you check us out, si.com slash NFL slash draft. Uh, you can get all the scouting reports, all the all-star game trackers, all the underclassmen. Uh, we've got you covered, 24-7, uh, 365. And so we're talking a little playoff football just for the record. Uh, the first two games we discussed, I think, could go either way. I am going to go with the Rams. I think they have the ammunition to get it done there. I'm going to stay with the Bengals at home. I think the Bengals can make a little bit of a run here. And Saturday is going to feature two marquee AFC matchups. 
uh, because then we have some familiar faces, the New England Patriots back in the playoffs. They'll be visiting the Buffalo Bills, uh, and the Bills took care of business after that first uh, snow, uh, you know, talk about a frozen tundra. That first game, I think there was like three passes attempted. The Patriots got the better of the Bills. The Bills came back and beat the Patriots. John, here they are meeting for a third time this season. Uh, Bill Belichick, you can never put it by him, but winning with the rookie quarterback can be awfully tough. Josh Allen, a lot of people uh, have anointed Aaron Rodgers the MVP already, but if there was one in the AFC, Josh Allen would be as strong of a candidate as anybody. Uh, What do you take away from this matchup here between New England and Buffalo? I mean, I love it, man. It's the rubber match, right? And, and two division rivals who are just banging it out. Um, it's going to be in Buffalo. So, you know, it's going to be crazy. You can have 80,000 fans, you know, in two degree weather with no shirts on, you know, cheering the bills on. So it, it, it's, a, it's a tricky environment to try to go in and win a playoff game. But if anybody can do it, I mean, Bill Belichick knows how to do it. And I love what he's done with his with his quarterback. Right, he's he's sort of not put too much pressure on him to you know to win to win the game. But we'll see. You know, clearly at the end of you know this game, it's going to be between the two quarterbacks. Someone's going to have to make a play probably to win the game. You know, as the clock expires, and you know we'll see. It'll be a great. It's going to be a great matchup, though. No, it it really is. And two different style of quarterbacks. Mac Jones, more of kind of a a pocket passer. He'll dink and dunk you down the field. And uh, Josh Allen, you know, he can pick up the first down with his feet if he needs to. Uh, But he he will he will sit back there and sling it right. He'll get it downfield with just a flick of the wrist. And uh, we mentioned, you know, the business of football. And I'm not sure, you know, Eric, if there's a more successful owner in terms of business than Robert Kraft. Uh, probably somebody responsible for this Monday night uh, playoff matchup airing. I know he has a lot to do with television <laughs> contracts, but uh, he has, you know, stuck with Bill Belichick through the adversity year of missing the playoffs. And uh, I think the last time that happened, what Matt Castle was the quarterback. And so here they are, uh, return of the Mac with Mac Jones taking on the Bills. How do you kind of see this rubber match breakdown? Well, first of all, shout out to my brother and his family who are season ticket holders of the Patriots living there in Western Massachusetts. And you early, earlier talked about all of us watching television for eight, 10 hours and creating problems for um, our wives. Let me tell you, my brother has three daughters. They're adults and they're all crazy nuts Patriots fans. Um, they could easily eclipse my TV time with their, their watching. So I don't think it's got anything to do with man, woman. It's football. It's football fandom. Um, Look, that's a great game. That That's a great matchup. That's a great tradition between those two teams. And, I mean, let's face it, the, the Bills for, for years and years were a reliable um, one in the win column for the Patriots twice a year so the Patriots could make their annual trip. To, <laughs> to the, seemed like the annual trip to the Super Bowl. And the Kraft family's done a great job. And I, literally, I can remember standing on a frozen lake in New Hampshire, and my mother, this was in the holiday uh, period, was selling the New York Jets, saying, Eric, you got a telephone call and you got to take it right now. And me getting my skates off, the lake was frozen, it was really cold, and hearing um, Belichick is, has just resigned and he's going. And so he is um, his own man, he's a phenomenal coach, and you better not count on knowing what Bill Belichick is thinking a day ahead of time, an hour ahead of time, two seconds ahead of time. And so he's going to bring something to that game and to situations in that game that are very hard to plan for. And I think that's a real edge um, that that could potentially counter the Bills' home field edge. Um, quarterback to quarterback, you, 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 you made the comparison. Um, one of them has um, got a slingshot for an arm and, and, and the same kind of legs as a horse all on one body. And the other guy's a student at Belichick's feet looking at all that game film uh, from the Patriots uh, over the last 20 years and, and learning things. So, you know, which way does it go? Again, I'm not handicapping because I know what business I'm about to be in. I'll leave that to you guys. 
Uh, no, for sure. I'll go on record here. I'm going to go uh, with the Buffalo Bills. I think it's finally a complete team. I picked the Bills to win it all in the preseason. Uh, I'm not so sure they don't pull it off. They've had a little bit of a roller coaster ride, but I think they can get it together. Uh, so I'll go Buffalo. I saw uh, one of the comments, or uh, one of my co hosts, Ralph Ventry, chimed in the Bills by 30. I don't know if they win by that much, but I do have the Buffalo Bills. Uh, to circle the wagons. But, um, you know, we're talking to John Collins, Eric Grubman, two uh, former NFL executives that we're so lucky to have here on the State of Football with Rick Saratella, uh, previewing the the playoff weekend here as we uh, get ready for the 2022 Super Bowl showdown, uh, February 13th, I think it is, if I'm correct, out in Los Angeles. So uh, exciting stuff. You mentioned Coach Bill, uh, Bill Belichick. Uh, Eric, no doubt a Hall of Famer. And when you look at these AFC matchups, I mean, there's several of these head coaches who will be trying on some yellow jackets for Canton. I look at this Pittsburgh and Kansas City matchup. I know a lot of people are counting the Pittsburgh Steelers out, but it's remarkable what Mike Tomlin has done here. Uh, what is it, 16 consecutive seasons without a losing record? I mean, they've been in the playoffs just about every year. He's got Super Bowls to show for it. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, but all of these guys, Belichick, Tomlin, Andy Reid will all be in Canton one day. Uh, Chiefs, probably the biggest favorite heading into the weekend here at Arrowhead Stadium, a very difficult place to play. Uh, what are your thoughts here, Eric? Would you want to play as the heavy favorite against a Hall of Fame quarterback who has to face never potentially never playing again if he loses? Um, this, uh, you just, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, these stories, these storylines. And so what's going through, what just, what extra adrenaline is going through Big Ben? in each of these games what, what what and what's that worth and what's it worth when his teammates are in the huddle with him or in the locker room and prep or this week getting ready and it's unspoken but no one wants him to go out a loser uh, particularly a first round loser so i don't know i i uh, do you take the the extremely well coached and a great quarterback. I, I, I don't know. I, again, I'm going to follow what I did before and leave that to you and John to pick, but I, I, I could see anything happening here. Yeah. I, you know, I think the Steelers are playing with house money, right? They're, they're a little bit loosey goosey, John, because uh, I could only imagine the thoughts of big Ben watching that wild uh, uh, game between the, the, the chargers and the Raiders the other night. Dodged the tie bullet by two seconds. Unbelievable, right? I mean, unbelievable. And uh, you can only imagine the thoughts going through his head. Am I going to ever play again and, and strap him up? But I think there's something to be said, uh, John, with what Eric mentioned. Hey, all the pressure here is on Kansas City. And, uh, you know, a play here on special teams, a turnover there, it's playoff time. Anything can happen. Yeah, I, I love that Tomlin said he fell asleep to the game, so he didn't see the end. Um, I'm sure he didn't, but, uh, yeah, look, Pittsburgh is a great story, great franchise, big Ben's, you know, kind of may, maybe his last run, but you know, Kansas city is just tuning it up. I'm sure they're not happy that they lost that number one seed. Um, I'm sure they feel like, you know, it's almost their birthright, you know, with Mahomes that they're going to be the number one seed all the time. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's going to be a tough one to beat Kansas city in Arrowhead. But uh, it's going to be one of those great storied matchups, right, between two great old franchises, right? Great fan bases. Imagine how many Steeler fans are going to be traveling out for that game and the potential oh, yeah. to cheer Big Ben on for one more time. It's pretty yeah, cool. That's... Pretty cool storyline. Those Steelers fans travel well now, so I'm sure they'll have their uh, – Always have. Yeah, they'll have their share of contingency out in Kansas City. And I think Pittsburgh keeps this one closer than people think. Uh, I do think Kansas City probably has a little bit too much ammunition for the Steelers to keep up. But I, I, th I do think it's going to be a little bit closer. And good point uh, by you, Eric. I mean, I talked about the, the head coaching matchup, but you got two quarterbacks. One, we know 
Big Ben is for sure a Hall of Famer. And Mahomes, if he keeps ascending and, and staying healthy, uh, it's inevitable he too will find his way uh, into Canton as well. Uh, wow. You talk about the Steelers traveling well. Uh, these next two teams also playing on Sunday, the 49ers and Cowboys. Uh, you go back to, uh, for me anyway, uh, the, the, you know, Charles Haley, the crossover uh, from the 49ers to the Cowboys. This was an intense rivalry back in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, here they are now, two uh, rejuvenated organizations. We saw Jimmy Garoppolo get to the Super Bowl and and really was just a, a, a pass or two away uh, from hoisting that Vince Lombardi trophy. So um, the 49ers go out, they draft Trey Lance, maybe uh, ignite a little bit of a fire. You got to give Garoppolo all the credit in the world with how he's handled the situation, how he's performed. And quite frankly, I think, you know, this could be an upset alert, John, where Dallas – they could get caught here, uh, you know, at the wheel. I think uh, uh, if they're not careful, Kyle Shanahan uh, is going to have a game plan ready. I think this could be another high-scoring affair. I have this one as a coin toss matchup, 49ers-Cowboys. I could see this one go in any direction. Well, that's really interesting, Rick. I, I, I uh, You know, you've been picking the home team, by the way. So, you know, you got Dallas. I, this one to me is the one that I think could be a, a blowout. I, I think that 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 Cowboy offense, you know, at home, uh, they've been sort of waiting to have a big, deep run into the playoffs. And, uh, you know, as you said, so much history between the 49ers and the Cowboys. Um, I, I, I like the Cowboys. Uh, I, I, I actually like them potentially uh, – you know, going all the way to uh, Green Bay and having one, another classic matchup, you know, for the NFC Championship. I think it, Cowboys it, look really good. Yeah, it, it'll be a good one for sure. I think the Cowboys, they are like that boom or bust team, though. Like, sometimes yeah. they look like a Super Bowl contender. Other weeks, they got me scratching my head. So, uh, we're winding down with John Collins, Eric Rudman. We have one more game I want to sneak in here. We're on location at the Test Football Academy here in Martinsdale, New Jersey. Uh, home of NFL Combine Training, Kenny Pickett, and so many others reporting here uh, for Combine Training. And so uh, we'll be continuous coverage over at the NFLDraftBible.com. Uh, let's talk about this last one here. Uh, uh, Eric, I'll, I'll go over to you. Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, Tom Brady, the 5,000-yard passer. It's, it seems like he's just setting a new record every single week. Uh, here in New Jersey, we're not too far from from Philadelphia area. I was I was actually hanging out with some Eagles fans a couple days ago, and uh, before they were figuring out if they're going to play Tampa or the Rams, and I said, "Oh well, you know, at least defensively, the Rams I thought were the more difficult challenge for the Eagles." But the, the 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 bunch I was sitting with wanted no part of Tom Brady. I don't think anybody <laughs> wants any part of Tom Brady uh, come January football. So uh, you know, kudos to uh, Nick Sariani, the first year head coach, gets his team into the playoffs. Whether or not the Eagles win, this was a great stepping stone for for a first year program. So. Um... I want to go back to the to, to to the Dallas game just for a minute and give a shout out to uh, my old high school teammate uh, from New Jersey, state championship Mendham High School, uh, Ralph D'Agostino. I was a, was a, uh, a New York Giants fan and remain a New York Giants fan. And Ralph from New Jersey was a Dallas fan. So just for Ralph, I'm I'm picking Dallas, and I hope uh, that they win. He, we remain friends there after all those. We got Eric on the record, finally. He's on the record. <laughs> so, but that's a sentimental favorite. That's not a betting favorite. Um, t Tom Brady and uh, and the Eagles. Um, so again, I'm going to defer to you guys to pick, but I'll give you the wild card view. The wild card view is where, what division has always hounded Tom Brady. The NFC East, <coughs> the NFC East, and the way they rush quarterbacks and the way they play defense have always pressured Tom Brady. So, on the one hand, um, I love him, and he was a next door neighbor to my parents and treated him very nicely. And so, you know, I love the guy, um, and I want the oldest guy in the NFL to keep winning to prove and keep playing to prove that I could get on the field. But 
Ah, the Eagles, man, they play tough football. The NFC East in the playoffs, they just, that front line on the defense is tough. So how do you handicap that when those playing styles clash? I don't know. That's up to you and John. Yeah, well, guys, uh, Eric makes a good point, a storyline I didn't really think about. Last time Tom Brady was uh, facing the Eagles, uh, the Eagles were having a, a parade in downtown Philadelphia, right? Uh, any any scary flashbacks for Brady here? JC, that's yours. I, I think he probably remembers that, right? Uh, so, yeah, I like uh, I, I like Tampa in this one. I, I think they're they're geared up for a big run, too. No doubt about it. You saw what they did to Carolina a week ago. They might dismantle the Eagles in that manner as well. Well, hey, uh, gentlemen, I know we got a heart out here coming down to the nitty gritty. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to chop it up with me here on the State of Football, part of the Fan Nation Network on Sports Illustrated. Uh, time for a parting shot or just a goodbye or uh, anything you want to throw out there in terms of what uh, people can expect to see. Any news coming up? Where to go find out, uh, follow. I know, Eric, you have a uh, presence on Twitter a little bit there. Anything you want to promote before we go? I want to thank the shareholders that we've had for a long time for backing us. And if you're not in, you know, come on in. The water's warm. But more importantly, the best things are yet to come. Oh, yeah. Get on board. Eric and John doing big things. Uh, we've had John on. This is, uh, you know, second or third appearance. And uh, John, any uh, final words, parting shots you want to send out to the shareholders or anybody out there listening or watching? No, I, I, same thing. I mean, I, I, Supergroup, you know, SCAH is a is a is a fun company, but Supergroup is is ultimately what's going to what's going to stick and what's going to be standing you know, long after. They're, they're a great company run by great management who really were pioneers in the online sports betting and, and gaming industries. So, you know, they've got 20 years of experience. The, these guys uh, have the global scale. They know what they're doing. And, and uh, you know, they're going to be a New York Stock Exchange publicly listed company shortly here. Thank you for having us on. This is a fun one. Some of the interviews are a grind and this is a lot of fun. And, you know, what this, this kind of goes back to your roots. You, sitting here with your friends talking about who's going to win. <laughs> Love it. We do here Love on the State of Football. That's right. Uh, here on Sports Illustrated for Rick Saratella, for Eric Rubman, for John Collins, uh, for the Sports Entertainment Acquisition Corp., the NFL Draft Bible Fan Nation, Sports Illustrated, the 2022 NFL Draft. We'll see you soon, everybody. Right.